I was wondering if maybe you would want to go on a date with me. I love you as a friend. Oh. Madara Uchiha once said, wake, wake up, up to reality. reality. And that's what I have to say to any of you with female friends. Just think about this for a second. An entirely separate sentient being who likely genuinely has good intention for you, but can accomplish anything but that. <laughs> Meanwhile, most of the men are dishonest with themselves in these relationships. They claim to be okay with just being friends when that's not true. If you don't believe me, then just listen to what this young lady has to say about male friends. Have you ever heard the line, you're such a great guy, but I would just never want to lose our friendship. Well, I'm here to explain why you're just a friend. You thought becoming her friend was the quick answer to weaseling your way into her heart. When you decided to act like a friend, that's all you'll ever be seen as. The divide amongst how men and women view cross-gender friendships is massive. Most of the time, someone likes the other person, and by that someone, I mean 90% of the time, it's the man. I'm in no way telling anybody how to conduct themselves in their social circles. If you think there's a valuable benefit to maintaining cross-gender friendships, I'd love to hear about it in the comments although i will say you better be very convincing hey guys it's dallas here and if you like this video obviously give it a like share it and send this to the families of our fallen brethren in the friend zone Starting off with section one, we're gonna be talking about the evolutionary psychology of cross-gender friendships. According to Dr. David Buss, an evolutionary psychologist, there are many sexual conflicts between men and women. These conflicts come about due to our evolutionary psychology. Throughout human history, men and women haven't hung out for purposes outside of romantic interests. As a result, men and women have come up with evolutionary strategies for mating. So women as opposed to men want to pick the best men they can get. So what does this mean if you're her friend? Well, as Jordan Peterson put it, it roughly translates to well i don't mind your physical presence but your genes should definitely not survive another generation that sort of generally translated into i think we should just be friends this brings me to my main point of this section pre-selection humans are social creatures and as such we are bound by things such as social proof so what is social proof well, i'll explain it with an example if you meet a girl and she claims to not be promiscuous you might be looking for some form of evidence to prove that she is not promiscuous if you see that same girl now hang out with promiscuous friends and she's exhibiting promiscuous behaviors, this is social proof that she's actually a promiscuous woman. Just like the old saying goes, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. But let's use this in reference to men with female friends. Men who are treated as just friends, how do you think other women view them? Well, if he talks like a friend and he's treated like a friend, he's probably better off as just a friend. Women tend to have this idea that they can put their male friends on with their female friends. However, the problem with this comes in the idea of pre-selection. If he's such a great mating candidate, why has this girl decided it's better to delegate him to the friend position? Pre-selection is the principle that women are usually attracted to men that seem to be more attractive to other women. If you're just a friend, then this obviously isn't you. What I'm trying to get at here is by deciding this girl doesn't want to fuck you, she has lowered your value in the sexual marketplace via social proof. And friends, as I understand it, aren't supposed to make each other look bad. I'm not saying this is her intention. What I am saying is this is simply the result of her making you just her friend. This actually brings me to the next topic, society versus nature. As mentioned before, human beings are bound by things such as social proof. And this is because we are social creatures. And to improve your standing through social proof, a lot of times we have to abide by the rules set in place by our society. In society today, it is a norm to call men who are territorial over their partner controlling or insecure. It makes a lot of men feel rather helpless in their relationships. This is a major conflict between the nature of a man and the society he lives in. One study found that there's a massive difference between amygdala activity between men and women. When men find a female attractive, they get a spike in amygdala activity. This spike in amygdala activity is not found in women. This actually triggers a fight or flight response in men. This is likely due to our evolutionary psyche. Men know that they must compete with other men for mates, especially if that mate is more desirable. Men also know that even after procuring said mate, they have to now protect that mate from outside threats. There's also the fact that paternity tests are a relatively new thing inside of human history. Human beings have not evolved for over 40 to 50,000 years, but technology certainly has evolved. Our evolution has not caught up with technology, and thus society has advanced to a point where certain parts of our nature don't fit in. To summarize, what are the three main reasons men are territorial? over their partners. For one, to compete. Two, to protect them. And three, to ensure paternity. Now, obviously, with modern day society, these things aren't really an issue. However, even though society has fixed a lot of these issues, you can't change nature. Society might be safer, meaning you don't have to protect, and it allows 
allows for people to be more leisurely in picking their mate, that doesn't mean women pick lower quality men just because they can. Meaning, there's still the need to compete. And the feeling that you need to protect still exists, along with the feeling that you need to ensure paternity. So as a man, if you are friends with a girl, you know to some extent that if she gets a boyfriend, you are making him feel jealous to some degree. Now, she won't understand this jealousy because she doesn't have a male's brain, meaning she's not experiencing this amygdala simulation he's experiencing. So she genuinely doesn't have a frame of reference. But you as a man can relate, and you're still choosing to do something that's putting a strain on her relationship. This also comes about with a physical boundary. Let's say hypothetically, she knows that information and still chooses to be your friend. She can't get physical with you in a way that you get with your male friends because it would be deemed inappropriate. Just based on these last two sections, it seems the best thing cross-gender friends could do for each other is to simply put stop being friends. And if the best thing you could do for a friend is to stop being friends, maybe the friendship shouldn't have existed in the first place. I know there's gonna be a lot of men saying, well, she's gonna have male friends regardless, so what difference does it make if I'm simply put one of these male friends? This actually brings me to my next section, the role of attraction. So there was actually a very comprehensive study done by Dr. April Bless Redcheck, and it found that men are way more likely to be attracted to their female friends than vice versa. She also found that there was a difference between same-sex friends and opposite-sex friends in a myriad of different things. One of these things was sexual access, meaning having sexual contact just short of intercourse. The inability to reciprocate attraction, well that's rather obvious. Denied sexual access, also another obvious one, it tends to be the reason why most male and female friendships exist. Resources gained, sexual rivalry, latent mate potential, feelings of decreased social status, feelings of increased social status, decreased mating opportunity, and so on. Dr. April's study basically found that there's a lot of dishonesty between friends in cross-gender friendships, primarily in the realm of who's attracted to who. To double down on this, according to an article by The Scientific American titled, Men and Women Can't Be Just Friends, the way men and women view their cross-gender friendships had virtually nothing to do with reality. Men were, more often than not, attracted to their female friends and thought that the feelings were actually mutual to some degree. The women were completely indifferent to their male friends and thought that feeling was mutual. Both of these had nothing to do with reality. Obviously, both of these things cannot be true in any of the friendships, but this was the case in most of the friendships. I'm gonna end this video with a line from this very same article. Can men and women just be friends? If we all thought like women, yes. I do think women genuinely believe that the friendship is even and they genuinely have good intentions for their male friends. However, if we all thought like men, we'd have a serious overpopulation crisis. Fact is, most men are dishonest when it comes to their cross-gender friendships and have romantic interests to some degree with their female friends. Hopefully this answered some questions you guys may have had regarding cross-gender friendships, but regardless of where you lie on this topic, I think it's important to remember that we're all just human, we're not perfect beings, and there's no need to be rude or dismissive to one another based on our gender. Thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.